So World War I has some pretty incredibly influential effects on the world um, after 1918. Now, politically, it reshapes the map of the world. Um, economically, it leads to the creation of the United States as a superpower, as well as the decline of Europe's position as the only manufacturing superpower in the world. But it also affects a lot of other things. It affects the social structure of the countries involved. It also affects the popular culture of those countries as well. I mean, this is, this is a war that involves absolutely everyone. This isn't some war that's fought on a distant battlefield by people uh, that no one knows and no one will ever see. You know, this is thanks to radio and the telegraph and video and photographic evidence. This is fought on the front page of every newspaper. This is fought in people's homes and in their backyards and literally in their backyards if you live in any part of Western France. So we'll start by talking about the cultural reverberations. Um, one of the things that World War I does is it starts to eliminate this glorious, honorable, macho idea of about what war is and how natural and amazing war is. Um, many people leading up to 1914 have no real connection to war. War is fought by soldiers and it's fought by sailors. And for most of the people in Western Europe, it's fought on the other side of the world. It's fought in Asia. It's fought in Africa. It's not fought right here with our own loved ones and our own people being killed in large numbers. Well, World War I changes that. Um, like I said, this war is on the front of every paper every day. And there's photographic and there's video evidence of the horror of war, the number of dead, the numbers of wounded that are returning home bring the scale of this war directly to people's attention. And it begins to change the way people look at war as not a natural thing not as some glorious rite of passage that's going to make men into boys or make boys into men. Um, instead, people start to see war for what it is, which is essentially, for lack of a better term, a meat grinder, especially now that all sides have these industrialized weapons. Um, so that leads to a lot of disillusionment after 1918 with not only war, but with European Western enlightened culture as well. Um, the past two centuries of European dominance had mainly been built on this, on this idea that Western culture was superior, right? This is kind of the basis for social Darwinism, that enlightened scientifically informed empirical western culture was clearly superior to the old mystical uncivilized ways of the east and these enlightenment ideals about human progress and human reason and the gloriousness of the human mind all start to fade away and dissolve in the face of the destruction of world war one and many people begin to question whether this enlightened, supposedly superior group of people, these Western European, these, um, you know, these Americans, um, truly are what they say they are, and whether these ideals that they've built their culture on are truly what's best for the human race going forward. And you can see a lot of this disillusionment, especially in the literature following, um, uh, following World War I, uh, things like The Great Gatsby or All Quiet on the Western Front are two um, very, you know, popular novels with ties to World War I that show how people feel disconnected from what they were taught for generations was the way forward. That 
westernization and modernization were the key to a better living and to human progress and in reality in their eyes what it brought them was the single most destructive thing that has ever happened in human life um you can also see it in the united states in the 1920s and early 1930s with what's known as the roaring 20s this period of kind of self-indulgence and you know live for today because tomorrow we all might die and what really brings all of this home is like i said the photographic and the video evidence of the scars of war right um these heroic ideals about men riding into battle or marching into battle shoulder to shoulder and facing their enemy eye to eye is replaced with the harsh reality of what trench warfare and industrialized warfare is and what it is is a lot of hardship it's a lot of loneliness it's a lot of very awful conditions right again these men are fighting and living in these trenches and they're outside which means that they're exposed to the elements they're exposed to horrific conditions they're exposed to death and decay all around them, dead bodies of their, of their enemies as well as their friends and their, and their allies surround them on all sides. Um, this attracts all kinds of vermin, rats, fleas, lice, um, not to mention the disease and the bacteria that accompanies dead, rotting animals and humans. So a lot of these experiences are reflected culturally after the war with this kind of rejection of western culture and people searching out new ways to you know culturally inform their life and to seek human progress in a different avenue um now these links right here are links to um videos from the post World War One era, where people have returned from World War One and have begun demonstrating um, psychological and neurological effects of industrialized war. Um, now, this is known as war neurosis or shell shock. This is kind of the precursor to modern day what we know as PTSD, and this actually begins the kind of mental and psychological investigation of what war does to the human psyche and the human body and kind of advances our understanding of the real outcome and the real impact of war. 